In the last video, we looked at a pretty long and drawn-out explanation of Olber's paradox and why it is that using these assumptions at the time, that the universe must be infinite uh, and static and uniform, led to this notion that the sky should then be bright at night. Now, I mean, obviously we know that the sky isn't bright at night, so there must be something wrong with these assumptions, at least. So that's sort of the, the thought behind sort of saying that we can resolve Olber's paradox. In other words, why is it not really a paradox? So let's go over some possible solutions for Olber's paradox. So I'd like to propose, I mean, number one, I mean, let's look at this one. So um, maybe the universe is not infinite. Okay, so that's maybe one of the things. So maybe the universe is not infinite. Um, so that would mean what? That uh, you could, I mean, it would, be, it would be possible to have a line of sight that doesn't hit a star. So, okay, so you could have a line of sight that does not hit a star. So that could be a possibility. So this right here, so the universe is maybe not infinite, and that means that it is possible to have a line of sight that doesn't hit a star. This one is not the best though, and the reason is because, I mean, uh, even if you considered this right here, even that would still make the night sky pretty darn bright, and it doesn't really explain enough. So, I mean, yes, we know that the universe is not really, it's not thought to be infinite, but that doesn't really help to resolve the paradox. I mean, it's a true statement so far, as we know, but it doesn't really help us to resolve the paradox. So maybe uh, the universe has a limited history. In other words, it's not infinitely old. In other words, the, un the universe, you know, it has an age. And if that's the case, then, I mean, maybe that, the, you know, some of the light from stars just hasn't reached us yet. I mean, that could be a possibility. So maybe that's the case. Now, does this actually work? Uh, yeah, actually, this one partly works. And this one right here could help. I mean, what this tells us then is that, uh, yes, I mean, the universe had to grow from some size. I mean, that is still a problem, though. I mean, it's, it's a partly answering the question. Because the universe, had to have a, if it had a limited history, it had to sort of start off of some size then. I mean, we're assuming that. I mean, how did the universe sort of start? Right? So, I mean, if it did that, it would have to have some sort of history. Um, but a, maybe a better way to explain it is that maybe some stars have already died. This is more realistic and this is more likely. You know, some stars have died so they don't exist anymore and some have not been born yet. I think this explains it sort of more directly. So have not been born yet. So because of that, if we look at the universe then, when we look out, I mean, yeah, we should in theory see lots of stars, but the problem is, some of them have died. They've exploded. I mean, we know that now that there are some, there are stars that explode in these big things called supernovas. Uh, some of them might make black holes. Some of them make a white dwarf and just slowly burn out. So, I mean, a lot of these stars have died, and some of them have not even been born yet, and some of them do sort of effectively live forever. So I think this, this helps us a little bit more with this one. So this one, for a few various reasons, it works pretty well, but not perfectly well, of course. Um, maybe the universe is not static. In other words, maybe the universe is expanding. Now this does help to resolve it as well, somewhat, because if we look at this, if this is supposed to be the universe, well then it's sort of it's expanding. And if the universe is expanding, whoops, I suppose this arrow should have been straight up. If the universe is expanding, that means, what this implies, is that we should have red shifted, so we should have, you know, stars' light should be red shifted to the infrared, perhaps. And that would be one uh, result of this. So if the space between them is expanding, that in increases the wavelength, and that would mean then that uh, it would go towards redder and redder values. 
which means it possibly is to the infrared, which means we can't see it. I mean, it's not visible light at least. But this doesn't exactly explain it, because if we look in the infrared, there's not a ridiculous amount of light you know, caused by those. So, I mean, that might cause this right here. That doesn't really help. But, um, I mean, yes, the universe is expanding. So this partly explains it, but not precisely. Just like the universe has a limited history, that partly explains it, but not exactly. So it's sort of a, sort of a combination of these right here. Um, so that's pretty interesting. What I wanted to mention quickly, though, is that, you know, when we talk about the speed that uh, the universe is actually expanding, um, one neat thing is that, you know, stars at the edge, maybe, might actually be expand or sort of moving at a speed faster than the speed of light. Uh, now, that's not entirely uh, the case, but it turns out that the universe's expansion, there's nothing in physics that says that the universe can't expand faster than the speed of light. And you might think that that makes no sense, but actually there's nothing in physics that says the universe can't expand faster than the speed of light. In other words, faster than C. All it says, I mean, the laws of physics do say, though, that, you know, the distance between two objects, you know, you can't actually move something from one place to another faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. So the laws of physics still hold in that sense that you can't actually travel or send a signal faster than the speed of light, which means if your star is sort of let's say it's near the edge of the universe and it's sort of, you know, expanding so fast that the, so the space between us and that star, which is sort of riding the universe's wake, that space between us, that could be expanding faster than a speed of light, which means the light from that star that's trying to get to us will never get to us because, of course, it's only traveling back at the speed of light, so we'll never actually see it. So it's kind of a neat thing that although things can't travel faster than the speed of light, the universe can actually expand faster. There's no problem with that. But anyway, how does this all relate to Olber's paradox? Well, it tells us, basically, that these of Newton's assumptions, that the universe is infinite, static, and uniform, must be false, at least partly. Something must be wrong with these assumptions. And it turns out that now we know it's actually a combination of these. I mean, the universe now is not thought to be infinite. Right? It's thought to actually be finite. There is some sort of edge, although it's complicated to think what's past the edge. But it doesn't seem like the universe is infinite. Static, that uh, is not thought to be true either. Now we actually think that the universe is expanding. And as far as uniformity goes, no, we see stars of different luminosities, and the distance between stars is not always the same. We can have things sort of clumping together in galaxies, and then big spaces between those. So, so that all three of these are actually sort of wrong. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you this Olber's paradox, it first of all is kind of a neat question, but it also brings up some of these of Newton's assumptions that now are thought to be false. And what I like about it is it sort of introduces these concepts of cosmology. The ideas about the universe expanding and this whole idea about the Big Bang Theory I think are now very well sort of set up. We sort of set the stage in order to be able to talk about those things.